Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's Tuesday morning, November 12, 2019. What does the 12th remind you of? Of every month. This is the date Grandpa Jacob died. So today would have been his how many months of anniversary? Ten. Hmm? Ten. Ten. Died in January 12, so now <coughs> November 12 becomes the tenth month since Grandpa Jacob passed away. So you know it's a good day every twelfth of the month to remember Grandpa and pray pray for the repose of the soul. Right? What about Grandma Lely? When was what's the date? The ninth. See? The ninth, which is also the birthday of Grandpa Jacob. So the ninth of every month is a good day to pray for the repose of the soul of Grandma Lely. What about Grandpa Oscar? <coughs> no, I know this. <coughs> huh? No, is that his birthday? January 5th. So, 5th. Birthday is May 3. Yeah, so the 5th of every month is also a good day <coughs> to remember to pray for the repose of the soul of Grandpa Oscar. And it's the birthday of the, the mom yeah. and help out. Okay. Oh, we have uh, Uncle Irwin on the call this morning. Good morning, Irwin. Uh, okay, so today the gospel is from St. Luke, chapter 17, verses 7 to 10. So let's read what uh, the gospel tells us. Jesus said to his apostles, Who among you would say, uh oh, who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from a plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, Prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. <clears throat> Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. This is not a very easy gospel to understand, admittedly. Okay? Um, not too many people understand what this gospel message is, so it's good for us to comment on this and understand it. But let's put it into context. Our Lord here is talking about the relationship of a master and a servant. Back in those days... Back in those days, servile, servile work was something very common. Okay? Uh, the rich people had servants under their beck and call. And servants, by their very nature, have a very <coughs> um, servile relationship with their masters. They, they are looked upon like second-class citizens. They're looked upon like second-class kind of people. They are not treated equally as the status of the master. Okay? So, uh, like in the example of our Lord here, see? Uh, you will never find servants who will be eating at the same table with their masters. It would always be the masters eating first and then the servants would eat later. This kind of reminds me of how it was back when we were growing up. We had maids. Uh, but you know, maids in our household were not really treated like servants. Where you know, it's 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 the, the, there's no personal relationship, there's no intimate relationship between servants and masters back in the old day. Uh, but of course, in our own household, we had three or four maids at any given time and a driver, um, but they were not treated like servants we treated them like they were part of the family okay but there were still some protocols some uh, rules that that had to be observed like you know uh, they don't eat at table the same way uh, at the same time we did 
Okay, we we first ate the family ate, and then uh, the the house help. We don't even call them maids. Uh, uh, we we would call them the house help. They would have their own time to eat. So uh, this is quite a reminder of how it was when we were growing up. Perhaps with one big difference, and the difference is that we did not treat our house help like second class citizens. We treated them like part of the family, but not not so, not so during the time of Jesus, and not so in many other uh, uh, societies up to now, where servile um, uh, relationships um, are a reality. There's such a thing as master and servant. And so, what is our Lord telling us here? Uh, masters, they they really couldn't care less about their servants. Uh, for for the masters, the servants are just precisely that, servants. You exist because you do what I tell you to do and nothing more than that. Right? I could not expect more from your service than you doing just exactly what I tell you to do. Okay? That is the kind of relationship between master and servant during those days. Right? When I tell you to eat, you eat. When I tell you to plow the field, you plow the field. When I tell you to clean the house, you clean the house. When I tell you to tend the sheep, you tend the sheep. That's all you're doing. And I pay you for what you do. And I really don't expect more from you than just doing what you are supposed to do. That is what is meant here by being unprofitable servants. Because what is profit? What does profit mean? It means you're earning something more, right? You're benefiting something more from an investment that you have put into something. And in this case, a servant, what investment does a master put on a servant besides paying him his wages and <clears throat> making him eat? That's all he's giving him. And so he does not expect more out of a servant who is being paid uh, minimum wage. We were talking about minimum wage last night, right? You cannot expect more of a servant who is being paid minimal wages and just being fed some food uh, for his day. There's nothing more you can extract from him. <clears throat> okay? There's nothing more you can extract from him <clears throat> than the service he's doing for you. <clears throat> that is what is meant by being unprofitable. You can't expect more. From a servant. Now why does our Lord. Talk about this. With his apostles. Because. He wants his apostles. And he wants us to realize. For our own consumption and benefit now. That we. Are unprofitable servants. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm having. <coughs> okay. As far as God is concerned. You and I, all of us, are unprofitable servants. God created us, and we are His creatures, and He really does not expect us to yield any fruit beyond uh, what our limitations allow. See? We, we are really very, very far in terms of relationship in terms of status when it comes to God who is our Lord and King and Master we are unprofitable there's nothing else that we can do to please God our our master okay? in the first place because we came into this world with a broken nature and we have the tendency to sin okay? so what can you expect what can you expect of somebody who is broken? What can you expect of something that is not even <laughs> well enough, strong enough, capable enough to do more than what might be expected of him? See? So in other words, we're practically useless as far as God is concerned. Think about it that way. We're practically useless. We're unprofitable. God cannot profit from us cannot yield anything from us that is our status that is our that's the truth about our nature 
and, and about our status with our standing with God. <clears throat> and and, and the, 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 the further truth is that besides the fact that we are unprofitable, what do we do in life? We even keep sinning and offending God. Not only are we not only are we not beneficial to God, but we, on the other hand, are a, a burden, so to speak. Right? We are a burden to God because of our sinfulness. Because of our tendency to sin, and we keep sinning all throughout our life. So what use will God have of us, really? Think about it that way. What use will God have of us? Okay. Having established that fact, God changed the dynamics. Okay. God, <laughs> Jesus wanted the apostles and us to realize that we are unprofitable servants. But at the same time, later on in this gospel, he tells us, but you see, you see, you nincompoops, <laughs> I changed that for you. While it is true that you are unprofitable servants, I change that for you. Because I came to reveal to you that God is actually a father to you. That God is your father. That this God who is your creator and Lord, that this God who made you, that this God who created the universe... That this God who you cannot satisfy because you are infinitely too far away in status to even satisfy God for all the sins you committed. This same God has changed this relationship. He does not treat you as servants. In fact, He has made you His own children. In fact, God has called us to be his own sons and his own daughters. And made us heirs of the kingdom of heaven. See? So not, not only did he uh, change the dynamics of our relationship with him. But he in fact gave us more than what we deserve. He even, he even gave his own son to ransom us from our own sinfulness. He even allowed his own son to die for us. And what did Scott Han say as we were listening to him last Sunday? Hmm? He, Jesus paid a debt he didn't owe because... Sorry? Because? Because we had a debt we couldn't pay. See how wonderful that is? Jesus came to pay a debt he didn't owe because we couldn't pay the debt that we owe. See? So, Jesus <clears throat> came to reveal not only his mission of salvation to save these unprofitable servants that we are, but moreover, he made us assume an entirely different identity. We are no longer His servants. We are no longer just His creatures. We are His children. And He came to reveal the fact that we are His children and made us heirs of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful meaning of this gospel today. And so we have to realize that, you know, we are children of God. Hey, we are children of God. We are not just a servant. We are not just the unprofitable servants. However, however, we, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there, right? Even if God had assumed <clears throat> us or made us assume a different identity, the identity of children of God, <clears throat> we still have to prove that we are worthy of being children of God. Okay? We still have to do some work. We still have to prove that we are worthy to be children of God. And how do we do that? 
What's that, Joe? I can understand you. Can you make it louder, please? I couldn't understand you. I'm sorry. Through our good works. Okay, through our good works, right? By living our faith faithfully, living our faith very well, by living up to the virtues that God has expected us to live by. In other words, by trying to be. What is the S word? By trying to be saints. Yeah. By trying to be saints. Because only saints, only saints inherit the kingdom of God. Right? <clears throat> only saints go to heaven. Only saints inherit the kingdom of God. So, while, while we already have a change of status, we are already children of God, we still have to work at it. Work at it and work on our sanctity. And realize... Realize that the work of sanctity in us is God's work too. Okay? That all that we can contribute to this effort is precisely our effort. <laughs> that we try. That we try our best. And that's all that God wants. That's all that God is, that's all that the master expects of his servants. That the servants do their best in whatever it is they're tasked to do. Okay? So it's the same thing. A master only expects the best productive work from his servants. Now we, who are no longer being treated as servants, but children of God, still have to be productive in that sense. We have to put in our own effort in this whole endeavor of sanctity. And then God, like a good master, in this sense, even a good father, would provide everything we need. Not only our material needs, but the needs of grace. In our souls that will help us carry out the good works that we are going to do and to carry out this struggle for sanctity okay? so by ourselves we cannot also do it alone by ourselves we are inadequate to be children of God we need the grace of God in our souls okay? we need to avail of the help that our master our Father can give us the grace that our soul needs to be nourished and to be strong and to be uh, well prepared to carry out uh -oh, the task that God has given us on earth, which is to sanctify ourselves. Okay? So let us give thanks today. Today, you know that Tuesday, Tuesday, today's Tuesday, right? Tuesday is traditionally the day the church uh, wants us to precisely meditate more on our um, um, on our um, filial uh, relationship with God, on our divine filiation, as it is called. Divine filiation means divine God filiation, children, childlike relationship with God. Tuesday is the day the church recommends that we keep in mind our divine filiation. To be reminded that we are children of God. And that is why this is the gospel we have today on the Tuesday. Because it reminds us that we are children of God. We are no longer just servants. Okay? We are children of God. And therefore, we should try to be worthy of that status. And we should try to act and behave. Like royalty, right? Like kings, uh, like 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 princesses and princesses who who conduct themselves with the dignity of their status as being royalty. Well, we are more than royalty. We can walk the streets chin up, not because we are cocky, but because we are happy that we are children of God. Okay, we have a higher status. Than any royalty can claim in the world. Eh? Because we are children of God. And we should act as such. Okay? Yes, okay. Well, we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go to Mass, ladies and gentlemen. Bye bye. Have a good day. Oh, Eva. Hi. Say bye bye, Eva. Very good. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Bye bye. Bye.